about, turn to Matthew with me. We're going to take a few snapshots on our way through the New Testament to the book of Acts. And uh, Matthew chapter 2, in verse 11. And I just want to show you some sacrifices of devotion in the Gospels. Those were some portraits from the Old Testament, those seven I mentioned. But in the New Testament, we have the same idea, sacrifices of devotion. And the first one is the wise men sacrificed to worship Jesus. Look at Matthew 2.11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down. It's interesting. That, you, you want to study something interesting. Look at the positions of worship. Falling down is regular. All the way through the book of Revelation, they must have had knee pads on because they're always falling down. They're falling on their knees. They're falling on their faces. They're laying down because they so want to show God that he is everything and they don't want to get any of the attention so they kind of drop out of sight and fall down. And these wise men fell down, worshipped him, and after they worshipped him and humbled themselves, they opened their treasures and they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They came to see Jesus. At what cost? Well, probably they traveled over a year from way off in the far reaches of the Medo-Persian Empire, maybe toward India. And, and you know, travel is very difficult across that, across that part of land. I mean, regularly we, we let people off the tour bus when we're over there doing a Bible study conference in Israel, and we let them walk around out in the desert. And uh, you know what, people, after a few minutes, they kind of get right back up to the vehicle. They don't like to be away from it because it's so desolate, it's so quiet. You don't hear anything except your own breathing. It's very quiet out there, and it's kind of overpowering. And these men subjected themselves to a year of travel at that great cost, and they traveled, and what did they do? They came from afar, and they fell before Jesus, and they offered their treasures to him. They wisely sacrificed to worship Christ. And it doesn't stop there. Look at chapter 4 of Matthew's Gospel. I'll show you another one. The disciples, the first disciples, like the wise men, also sacrificed to follow Jesus. Those first followers left behind their security to follow Christ. Matthew 4.22. When Jesus called, look what happened. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. They left the boat, source of security and income, and their father, source of, you know, all the security that that would provide, they left that behind to follow Jesus. The first disciples sacrificed to follow Jesus. Uh, look at chapter 6 of Matthew, a little bit further. Jesus' first sermon. What does he preach about? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. He said, if you want to invest with me, you've got to exchange your earthly treasures for ones in heaven. You've got to give them up. He says you can't have both. He says you can't hold on to it here and get it there. He says you've got to let go here in order to have it there. I, I can remember my first experience uh, as a young man. I got my credit card. You know, back in the 70s, that was a big deal. And I remember getting my credit card out and, you know, it went and you had to stand behind the glass and it has that little tray that goes underneath and the person going, hey, how you doing? Sir? You know, you can't quite hear that microphone they have at the gas station. And I remember I had my credit card, and I stood there, and they said, they went like that. And I thought, I'm not going to turn loose this thing. My mom told me, don't let anybody have it, you know. And so there I'm standing, they go, come on, let's put that in the thing. And I said, what? And they said, put it in the thing. And so I set it down there, and they grabbed it, and they were behind the glass, and they had my credit card. It's hard to turn loose it, but I found out to get the benefit of it, you had to let go of it so they could do whatever they did with it and charge me. By the way, they punched one too many buttons and charged me $600 for my gas instead of six. And they said, but it's automatic, and we'll just issue you a $594 credit. I knew I should have done what Mom said, not giving them that credit card. But you know what? You had to let loose of it for the benefit. And these, look what Jesus says. You have to let loose of it. Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Why, Jesus? Because moth will destroy it. Now, what you say, wait a minute, we have mothballs. Well, back then, they didn't. They had wormwood. Wormwood is a bush that grows. It's an herb. And if you cut your wormwood bush off, I grow wormwood. It's a nice herb. And if you turn it upside down and hang it in your closet, it's supposed to ward off moths. The problem is it falls apart and gets all over, you know. It's kind of not real efficient. 
But even with wormwood back then, moths still came in and ate their silk and their precious garments. And rust destroyed. And thieves broke in and stole. He says, why would you ever put your treasures somewhere where they can get wet and moldy and rusted and have people steal them when you can lay up your treasures in heaven where, he says, we don't have any moths up there. We don't have rust. There's no mildew. There's no flood. There's no storms. And there are no thieves allowed to break in and steal. And Jesus said, if you want treasures in heaven, exchange them now. Kind of like the Russians. Did you know they're changing their money? As I told you, when they went out with the Merrills, and I see Scott up there, and I paid for his dinner. He's one of those heavy eaters at the end of the table I told you about. But uh, it cost a million rubles. That's less than $40. And you know what, what uh, uh, Yeltsin just declared last week? He said, we're going to knock the last three zeros off all the money. They actually should knock the last six zeros off, you know, really. But they're going to knock the last three. And he said, you've got to exchange your money. Give it to me, he said, and I'll give you the new money. You know, it sounds, doesn't sound very good to me, you know, but, but he said, if you want your money to be worth anything, you've got to trade it in, the new Russian ruble. Jesus says, hey, I won't, I'm not going to trick you. I'm not a, 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 a trying to get your money. So what I'm trying to get is your devotion, and devotion will sacrifice. Keep turning to Matthew 26. I want to show you another one. Matthew 26, and the New Testament's filled. I'm just drawing a few lines here between some points in the Bible just to give you an idea. But Matthew 26, 6, the end of Christ's ministry was anointed with sacrifice. And this is so beautiful. When Jesus was in Bethany, verse 6, at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume, and she poured it on his head. Now, for you to get the idea, some of these vials are still there. In fact, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, burnt house, it's called, in Jerusalem, they have a place that made this expensive perfume, and it was destroyed in the destruction in AD 70. And when the house burned, the roof fell in, and it sealed everything, so all the perfume bottles didn't get broken or stolen by the Romans, and they're all still there. And it's very interesting to see them. They're exquisite, delicate vials, and they would seal them with the perfume inside so it wouldn't evaporate or lose its, its uh, beautiful fragrance. And if you wanted to use the perfume, instead of having a nice cork or a nice screw top, you had to break off the top and pour it out, and it was gone. You didn't get to put it back together. And so this woman broke her vial, a very costly perfume, and since she couldn't keep it, it was just filling the room, she dumped it on Christ. She lavished it on him. That's a beautiful hymn, broken and poured out in devotion to Christ as he reclined at the table. And to those who weren't worshiping, verse 8, they says, wow, this is waste. But Jesus said, hey, verse 10, she's done a great thing. She anointed me with sacrifice. You know, Jesus likes no regret sacrifices. He likes people that break their vial and dump it on him and don't say, oh, wish I could have kept half of that. You know, when they do that, what does he do? Ananias and Sapphira. Boom. Because don't give the appearance of sacrificing and then hold back. Don't give the appearance of saying, all to Jesus I give, and then on the side, hold back. Jesus doesn't like that. He likes no regret sacrifices. One more, Mark 12. Turn over the next book. Mark's Gospel, the next Gospel, chapter 12. Because this is what Jesus says. He says, I measure an offering given to me in Mark 12, 43, by the sacrifice that's involved in giving it. He says, you know, most people measure by the weight or they measure by the volume. Jesus said, I don't. He says, with me, I measure by how much it costs you to give that. Now, have you ever thought about that? That's the only equitable way. Uh, I mean, for some people, a dollar is a big thing. I was sharing Tuesday night, I was at this dinner with, with three other couples, and they had us all tell how we met our wife. And so it was really neat to hear. I, some of them I'd never heard how they met their wife and how the Lord led them. So I was sharing, and I said, on our second date, I was so impoverished when I met Bonnie. Now I'm more impoverished with all the children. But when I met her, I only had a dollar for our first date. So we went to Dunkin' Donuts and bought one cup of coffee and one donut, and we got one free cup of hot water with a lemon. And I squeezed the lemon and gave that to her, and I took the coffee. And we split the donut in half for one dollar. And we had ten cents left over to leave on the counter. You know, a dollar then was a lot. Now, a dollar now might not be very much. But did you know that was giving her everything? I mean, that was my laundry money. 
I had to wear everything twice that week, you know. I didn't wash it and didn't go out with her either, you know, <laughs> because of that. But, and that was a sacrifice too. But look at, at, at Mark chapter 12, verse 43. Jesus called his disciples and said, Look at that poor widow. You all know the story. It's the widow's mite. And she had two little leptons, they're called. And they're so small that they could fit on your thumb and you could cover them with your finger and no one could see them. They were called onion skins back then. They were so tiny. They were worthless to most people. This is everything she had. She had two little coins that were stuck on her finger and she had to hold them so she wouldn't lose them. And Jesus says, watch her. Assuredly, I say, this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had, her whole livelihood. Jesus said offerings in, in heaven are measured by the sacrifice that are involved. And Jesus said, I like no regret sacrifice. I don't like you to calculate how it can hurt the least. I want you to calculate how the sacrifice you make to me will hurt the most. Because we need to hurt the fleshly desire we have to clutch and to grasp.